All right, we have a very special guest, and I'm so happy I can have the privilege to interview him, and it's Nick Vujicic, something like that. I'm going to try to get it again. Perfecto, yeah. perfecto. Well, we're so happy you're here in our hometown, Bogota, Colombia, visiting International Charismatic Mission. Well, Nick, you're such an inspiration to all of us. Uh, I know everyone watching, they want to know a little bit about your early life, how you started off, and what was your supernatural encounter with Jesus? Uh, primero, uh, los amo, los amo, Dios te me diga, gracias por tu amor y oraciones <laughs> para mí y mi familia. Uh, it is my honor to be here. Thank you so much uh, for, for having me here, and God bless you and your family and your church. Thank you very much. Um, it was a, a really cool family that God had given me. My parents were believers. In fact, I'm a pastor's son. Oh, so... So we, you and I have relate, some things in common, yeah. right? And so, uh, you know, they always told me that God loved me, that He had a plan for me, and it was difficult, of course, at times to believe that God had a plan for me. But we know in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, that God does promise that He has a hope plan in the future for us. And uh, it was very difficult at first, especially going to school. I was bullied at school. I felt alone. I felt like God had forgotten me. And uh, I had, you know, faith that God could yeah. give me arms and legs. Yeah. And I prayed for them. And they didn't come. And so the question is, when we ask God for things, where is He when we're in suffering? And so uh, it was a bit of a journey to get through and I uh, went through depression one day at a time with the encouragement of my parents. They continued to plant seeds of faith in me. Um, I went through a depression, uh, tried to commit suicide at age 10, feeling wow. like there was no hope, feeling like I would never get married. And then at 15 was the supernatural experience. experience. Um, it was uh, an experience that I'll never forget. And after so many years of asking God why I was born this way, I read John chapter 9, the first three verses. And uh, Jesus was asked, why was he born that way? Yeah. And Jesus said it was done so that the works of God would be revealed through him. And that's when I knew, I'm like, wow, you know, like Jesus didn't even tell him his plan, uh, but he had one. Just because he didn't tell the blind man he's playing, it doesn't mean that he didn't have one. Yeah. And then I was also surprised at the fact that the blind man, can you imagine being blind, he doesn't see Jesus, and Jesus puts mud on his face. He could have easily done, hey, whoa, 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 what are you doing? But he let Jesus do his perfect will. And that's when I said, God, if you have a plan for a blind man, you have a plan for me. So come into my life and set me free from the greatest two disabilities, which is sin and death. And change me, I want to live for you. And if you don't give me arms and legs, I'll worship you and serve you for the rest of my days. And I still have a pair of shoes in my closet in case he says yes. <laughs> wow, wow, that's, that's so amazing. And I think it's so important what you say. Really, it, it comes to Jesus. It's not really religion, it's not really rules, but it's you, you saw Jesus, he came to you. And now you're such an inspiration. And when did you start uh, preaching and really giving this message, seeing that you had a voice and that God wanted to use your voice? And right now your voice is being heard all around the world. So how did that start? How did you start? Did you dream of being a preacher or how, how was it? Um, when I was 13 years old, it was the first time a speaker came to my school. and. Um, uh, I thought to myself, wow, what a story, what a, what a mission that he can actually share his story and touch people's lives with it. And I thought maybe one day I'll have a good enough story and, you know, share mine, you know. Yeah. But at 17 years old, uh, not even thinking that speaking would be any sort of ministry or career for me, uh, God sent me a friend, um, the cleaner of my school. He was a charismatic wow. Christian, right? Full on speaking in tongues and all that stuff. <laughs> And he's like, you know, we talked about everything. We talked about sex, we talked about God, we talked about war, we talked about marriage. And he looked at me one day, and I was 17, and he said, you're going to be a speaker. And I said, come on, man, you're crazy. Tu eres loco, no? <laughs> and I said, no way, man. He said, yeah, yeah, you're going to be a speaker. And I said, what am I going to speak about? He said, you're going to share your story. I said, I don't have a story. He said, yes, you do. He said, no, Nick, there's a, there's a prayer group at the school, 10 of them. Would you please share your story there? And I said, no way, I don't have anything to share. For three months I said no, and then he twisted my arm and I said yes. And I spoke there for about 10 minutes in front of 10 people. And uh, they started crying, and I'm like, oh, thank you for making me feel good. 
And then I started getting phone calls. Can you speak at this youth group? Can you go to this church? And then a, a youth leader at a church was also a counselor at a high school. And I couldn't talk about Jesus because it was a public high school yeah. okay, in Australia, 2002. And I had seven minutes to talk. My palms were sweaty and my knees were shaking. <laughs> And uh, within three minutes, half the girls were crying. And then one girl in the middle of the room started weeping. And she put up a hand and she said, I'm so sorry. Can I come up there and give you a hug? And in front of everyone, she came and she hugged me. And she cried on my shoulder. And she said, thank you. No one's ever told me that they love me. No one's ever told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am. And that's when I knew, even if I couldn't say the yeah. word Jesus, Just that they could speaking. see the love. They could see the light. They could see something more. And then that's the entrance to then tell me more about your story. Okay. And so that was the beginning. And that's when I knew I wanted to be a speaker. And I was 19 years old. I was halfway through my double degree in accounting and financial planning. Wow. And I told my mom and dad, I said, mom and dad, mom and dad, I know what I want to be for the rest of my life. And my dad said, good, <laughs> finish school first. <laughs> and so uh, I did finish school. I graduated at 21 and uh, went straight into speaking. And so uh, 53 countries, 11 presidents, seven congresses. Wow. And God's opened up doors for me to speak in front of, uh, in a week, 350,000 people and 80,000 gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ in those five days. And so God has just opened up massive doors and I am so thankful. I am so humbled. It's not me. It's nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. It's about whatever broken pieces you have, that if you trust God with your broken pieces, He is the one who can bring the most amazing, miraculous, beautiful things out of your broken pieces. Wow. So God really put that love also for souls, for, for His children. And, and I know many people are accepting Jesus, are getting to know Jesus through your life. And also we heard that you got married, you have a family. Well, I know everyone wants to know how, how this happened, when you met her, who is the lucky, lucky lady. I'm the lucky guy, don't worry. <laughs> Um, before I get into it, there was one line that you said, you know, that you said uh, that God gave me a compassion for souls. Um, I know there are many teenagers watching and I want you to know that heaven is real and hell is real. God is real and so is Satan. Angels are real and demons are real. And so when someone attacks you, yeah, it's not about flesh and blood. It's about principalities and powers of darkness. And the reason why I do what I do is I ask God to help me to have compassion upon every single soul that I see, including my enemies, even the people who bullied and teased me. Now, bullying was the reason why I tried to commit suicide. But even my worst enemy, I wish not that they go to hell. Hell is so bad that I don't even wish my worst enemy to go there, right? Yeah. And so I've asked God to supernaturally, as we walk in an active relationship, that He transforms our minds, He changes our hearts, and that we can actually love our enemies. Why? Because we know that God loves them too. Yeah. God loves my enemies. And He expects us, as we are forgiven, to forgive and to pray for their souls, that their spiritual blindness may go. So even the man who rapes my daughter, I need to pray for his soul. And I want, wow, that's really loud. And I want that person to come and see God. I want that person to be free. I want that person to experience the forgiveness of God through the power of the Holy Spirit and a new life, an eternal life. And so I just want you to know that as Christians, we need to not just come to church. We need to live in a way that shows the love, shows the compassion of Jesus Christ everywhere we're at. Are we perfect? No, but we must strive for that perfection. So in that, as you're faithful with the little, God blesses you with more. And um, I'm so thankful that, you know, there was uh, obviously a lot of questions in my mind. And one of the questions as a teenager was, God, if I'm speaking 270 times a year, 600 flights in four years, how am I going to meet my wife? So surprise, surprise, I met my wife at a speaking engagement. Oh, really? And what was it that you saw her and she impacted you? You know, it's a, it's a really good story. Yo tengo dos libros, Una Vida Sin Limites y Un Espíritu Invencible. And in the second book, um, there is uh, the story of how we met. In a nutshell, it's a long story, 
In a nutshell, I met her boss at a function. Her boss wanted to connect me with my wife's sister. Don't worry, my wife's sister is now married. It's okay. <laughs> and, but we went to Ta Dallas, went to Texas, and it was a very, very small speaking engagement. Maybe only 16 people. Oh, wow. And so her boss was there, she was there, her sister was there, and so on. And we're talking about the ministry. And she knew nothing about me until that day. And uh, our eyes connected, and that was it. Uh, love at first sight. Wow. And uh, she was very shocked because at even that time, she had a boyfriend. And she had never felt what she felt when she looked at me. And uh, I felt the same thing. And I had had a previous relationship. And I was certain that she was the one. And uh, I just want that to be an encouragement for everyone that, you know, when God says no, um, that God has definitely something even more special in mind. And it's not finding the perfect person. You'll never find the perfect person. Um, but it's finding that perfect holy matrimony match that only God can choose for you. And so as we've honored God in our relationship, we um, abstained from sex until we got married. Um, and God's honored that. And now I can look my son in the eyes and, uh, and say, uh, I waited for your mom. And, um, you know, we need to be, especially men, I want to talk to the men if I may. Yeah, of course. You know, I believe that um, when, the, when the family falls, uh, the nation falls. And I believe that the one key factor of a family falling is the man. When the man falls, the family falls. We are the spiritual leaders. We are the priests of the home. And uh, we need to take responsibility. If my wife has a problem, it's my problem. If my son has a problem, that's my problem. And uh, I can't be an excellent father without knowing the most excellent father. And so um, as I have in priority, and this is also for you, number one, God, number two, family, number three, ministry. Yeah. Don't ever sacrifice your family over ministry. Now I say this without my wife by my side. And this year was very difficult to be apart. Um, we actually planned on doing 26 countries together, but we're not, we're not planning on having a child so early in our marriage. And so um, uh, God had different plans. And so uh, we prayed about canceling every single country. And uh, on one hand, it was a very easy decision. On another hand, it was very difficult. But by the grace of God, preaching across 26 countries, uh, 500 million people, no exaggeration, had heard the gospel this year. Wow. And so, so far... This was only this year? This year, 450 wow. million so far. And so we met with presidents, we spoke at congresses, we were on media, my speeches were on national TV. Um, we're the first evangelist to do stadiums in Taiwan, first evangelist to preach in Singapore TV, just a lot of stuff. And we give all the glory back to God. And so we felt that this is what God wanted this year. And, and uh, so next year is going to be very different. And uh, as we're planning now around the fact that I'm now a husband and a father. Yeah. So. Wow, that's amazing. And I think God is amazing, right? Yeah. And I love what you said about pulling, putting family first because that's something my parents have always talked about. Like family always comes first before ministry and the ministry, we try to involve the whole family. So we speak the same language. And well, thank you so much for being with us this short time. You truly are that modern day evangelist that the young people need, the new generation needs this message. And really um, thank you for being obedient to your calling. Praise God. And thank, thank you, you. For, for being a warrior. Because I know there's, uh, when you understand the, the spiritual realm, you need to decide, all right, I'm gonna be a warrior or what am I gonna be in? You truly are a warrior. Thank you so much for coming and for giving this message of hope. We really admire you. And we hope we can bring you back, but with your wife and son, <laughs> that's gonna be our, our one wish. One day, one day we'll And come maybe back. like some last words for everyone that's, that's watching this program. If you don't know the truth, you will be chained in a lie. Know the truth of your value, that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. You are 
created for eternal purposes. You are royalty because your father is the king of kings and lord of lords. You don't need to know or care about what the world thinks of you. Uh, God is with you. He's going to give you all the strength you need. Take one day at a time. And no matter how broken your pieces are, God does bring all things according to uh, all things together for the good, according to his purposes. Uh, God has called you into those purposes. Uh, God loves you. So read the word, get into the word, uh, study your Bible, pray, be disciplined in that, and you will see the blessings of God. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you for your time. Gracias. And everyone that's watching, God bless you. We hope you have a blessed week. See you soon.